here with AL.com. Hope this finds you well. Uh, we're going to talk a little Alabama recruiting. Alabama surging in the recruiting rankings, rankings according to 247sports.com. He is uh, Alabama. I said he. Alabama is now ranked number two. Matt Zenit's here to discuss that with us. He's with AL.com as well, our SEC insider. And Matt Zenit, some big moves for Alabama over the weekend. We start with the Brock Meyer twins or Brocker Meyer twins. Tommy and James, who committed to Alabama, two of the top-ranked O-line men in the 2021 class. And then, of course, four-star offensive guard Terrence Ferguson also committed over the weekend. So we saw a big surge in the rankings for the Alabama Crimson Tide in terms of where they were at in those recruiting rankings. And, you know, it seemed like there was a little bit of a lag and a little bit of a lull. But here we are. So first and foremost, why don't you just give us a summary of sort of where we're at and why Alabama has suddenly surged there in the recruiting rankings? Well, the, the main reason behind it, they, they have some coaches who are doing a great job from a recruiting standpoint. So have Charles Huff, who's ranked number one nationally in the 24-7 recruiter rankings. You have Carl Scott, who was the, the top recruiter in the SEC last year, who was the, the primary guy on the aforementioned Brocker Meyer twins. And then Kyle Flood, to go along with that, has done a great job in helping Alabama build what's shaping up to be really an elite offensive line class. And like you said, it was a hell of a weekend for for them, specifically from an offensive line standpoint. So even before this past weekend, they had already gotten a commitment from five-star offensive lineman, five-star offensive tackle J.C. Latham. And now to mm -hmm. go along with J.C. Latham, you have the, the Brockermeyer twins, five-star offensive tackle Tommy Brockermeyer, and then his brother, James Brockermeyer, who's ranked as the, the top center in – this year's recruiting class, the number one center in the country. And then two days after landing them, you bring in the number two offensive guard in the country to go along with that in Terrence Ferguson. So now for Alabama, you have two five-star offensive tackles. You have the number one center in the country and now the number two guard in the country to go along with that. And the, the crazy part for them, they're in position, position to potentially add even more along the offensive line in the com coming months. Yeah, so obviously starting there, the commitment of the Brockermeyer twins, of course, and then Ferguson um, already bolstering, you know, really that elite O-line headed up by Kyle Flood. You know, the offensive line obviously kind of been a staple, you know, for this football team. How does the commitment from these guys help that even more heading into the 2021 season? I mean, they're in position, even with all of the great offensive line groups that they've brought in under Nick Saban, this may end up being the best. It may be one of the best in recent memory. I don't I don't know. It's not too often that you see schools bringing in a group with this kind of talent across the board where you already have five, two five-star guys and then two guys that are – legitimately among the top two at their position to go along with that. And, and once again, th there's potentially still more coming, maybe even a, another five-star guy a, at that offensive tackle spot to go along with what they have already. They're in position to potentially do that, which would make it was already an elite group a, even more impressive. And of course, you know, I always shout out my boy, Kyle Flood, you know, the Rutgers girl that I am, you know, mm -hmm. Kyle Flood coming from Rutgers. And so, just got to throw that out there. So he's obviously doing that. Yeah, he's been involved in the recruitment of all four offensive linemen that they've added at this point. It was heavily involved with the Brockermeyer twins. And then it was very much involved with Terrence Ferguson also. So it deserves a lot of credit for the group that they've been able to bring in at this point. And I always joke when I, when going out to practice this past season, it's like I could always hear where his position group was at. As soon mm -hmm. as I walked out on the field, I could always hear him screaming from a mile away obviously has that voice a little bit of that northern accent that northern twang so like but uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. um so another big name that you told us to keep an eye out on five-star defensive tackle damon Payne. he's mm -hmm. expected to make his commitment i guess july 26th what can you tell us about damon and the impact he can have for the crimson tide um if he chooses to go in that direction alabama looks to be in a decent position with him so uh it's a kid that if you talk to people around the football world, he, he's the kind of guy that is hard to, to get a great read on. So at, at this point, it's hard to make a prediction or, or make a bet where you would be fully, fully confident in that kind of bet. But that being said, 
the, the information I have, it does seem like Alabama is in a solid position with him. And the, the latest word, word that I'd gotten during the course of the weekend is that it may come down to Alabama and, and Arizona State for him, which is interesting considering it's, mm-hmm. it's a Michigan kid and two of the primary schools in the mix form are Alabama and, and Arizona State. But uh, Charles Huff, who, who I'd mentioned earlier, who's who's right now ranked as the number one recruiter in the country, is the lead recruiter on him for Alabama. Seems like there's a pre-existing relationship there with Damon Payne's high school coach. I'm sure that's been helpful just throughout the course of this recruitment. And like you said, the the decision is coming up in the near future for him. And if you can add a, a kid like that to, to go along with the, the class they have already, uh, j- just makes this group even more impressive because I-, I think in the the twenty four seven composite rankings, the number one defensive tackle in the country is a five star recruit, and just a-, a really talented kid that's highly thought of, has a lot of potential, and uh, I-, I know is a top target for Alabama and a lot of other schools around the country. All right, so I want to ask you because we're obviously in a in a very different time right now in, in the midst of this uh, coronavirus pandemic. Recruiting has certainly been quite a bit different, obviously. You know, the coaches will tell you that. Obviously, the the athletes will tell you that and how things have been quite different. How do you think that the pandemic has either positively or negatively affected recruiting to to date? It hasn't been too negative for for Alabama. During the course of the last couple of months, they've gone from, I I don't know, what what was it, 55th nationally or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now they're they're number two in in the country behind, I want to say, Ohio State. So, uh, maybe it's affected some schools. It hasn't affected Alabama in anything but but a positive way, just based on what they've been able to get done during the course of these last couple of months. And the the momentum, it, it doesn't seem like it's going to end at, at any point soon because there are some other guys that they're very much in the mix for that uh, if they do end up landing them, will make this class even more impressive. So I do not think this is the end of it in terms of that momentum and uh, adding guys to this group for 2021. All right. And so obviously Alabama fulfilling some of those positions we talked about previously, if there's any other needs or position groups that need to be fulfilled or addressed, what would you say those would be? And where do you think Alabama is really trying to target that group of kids or that unit, particularly uh, for the 2021 recruiting uh, class? Yeah, the, the two biggest things I would say, so it's not as much weight what they're going to continue to do move, moving forward, but two things that they've really addressed already are specifically the offensive line, which we've talked mm-hmm. about, obviously, and then to go along with that, they, they've put together a hell of a receiver class also. So mention the, the highly ranked kids that they've added along the offensive line. Mm-hmm. Receiver-wise, they, they have three elite kids also. So they, they have five-star wide receiver, Ja'Cory Brooks. They have two other highly ranked kids to go along with that, including Aggie Hall. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing his first name correctly, uh, who's a top 70 kid nationally. Uh, Christian Leary is one of the, the fastest kids in th- this year's re- recruiting class. And that's another position that, similar to how I talked about the offensive line, how they could still be adding more to it. It seems like that's the case at, at receiver also. But even just limiting it to the group that they already have in place. It's a, an impressive group and arguably a, at this point, based on the, the commitments that are already in place, maybe the, the most impressive receiver group in the country as far as commitments at this point. All righty. Well, thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. And of course, always keeping us up to date on the recruiting rankings and where guys stack up. And of course, big news for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Big weekend for them. We expect more coming along. Uh, Like you said, in the coming days, Damon Payne expected to commit July 26th. Uh, You can, of course, check out Matt Zenitz um, on Twitter. He keeps us up to date there as well as on AL.com with the latest in recruitment. And um, we appreciate all the insight as always. Always good to be on with you. All right. Well, take care.